uh, in honor of Ant-Man uh, Quantumania coming out recently, uh, I decided to watch a bunch of shrinking movies, because he shrinks. Um, so, first of all, I watched Fantastic Voyage, which I have in this uh, little combo pack, that one, um, where they shrink in a little submarine and they have to go around this guy's body to uh to save him because he has he knows like some state secrets or something it's not really important um one funny thing in the movie is they so it's supposed to take place in the distant future of the 90s <laughs> they have the technology to shrink whole submarines but they still use overhead projectors with transparent sheets. Um, and uh, they have markers on like a big diagram of a body to mark where they are. And they can only know where they are like from Morse code, like interactions. So it's like, it's funny that it's like, Ooh, this future technology with all this really old technology. Um, yeah, it, the body diagram, it kind of reminded me of, like, World War II battle maps. Like, oh, this is where they are now. Little X there. Oops. Um, that being said, the visual effects for the time are f still fairly stunning. Uh, and I guess... Alleged, according to IMDb uh, trivia, in the 80s there were some medical schools that would screen this movie, like, just to illustrate different parts of anatomy. So I guess it did a good enough job. Um, another cool touch is with in the movie they say they have an hour uh, before they'll begin growing back to their original size. And this is about an hour from the end of the movie, so more or less it takes place in real time. Um, it does star uh, Stephen Boyd, who you might know as Masala from Ben-Hur. Um, he's basically kind of a generic James Bond kind of person. He has puns and everything. Um, it also features uh, Raquel Welch, who unfortunately recently passed away. Um, this was her first role. Uh, there is kind of a funny moment when some ad antibodies only attack her when they're like outside the ship. Um, and like Stephen Boyd was right there in the blood, right next to her. And they, they don't attack him at all. Uh, yeah. And like I said, the, the guy they're actually doing the surgery on, he's a complete MacGuffin. He, it does not matter. <laughs> Like, whether he lives or dies, like, the movie ends and you don't actually know, like, if he's gonna recover. They're just, you know, spoiler, they, you know, get back out and they're just like, okay, we, successful mission, but you don't actually see the guy wake up. Like, the whole movie, he's just laying there with, like, little satellite dishes around his head and shit, and it's like, he's the whole reason we're here. Why do we not know if he's okay? Um... Next movie I watched, which I don't have a physical copy of, unfortunately, gonna need to remedy that, um, was The Incredible Shrinking Man, and if you haven't seen it, you need to, like, it is a classic. Um, the only place I could find it was a streaming site called The Internet Archive. I will have a link in the description. Um highly recommend oh my gosh it's still such a captivating movie um i will admit some of the um the composing the combination of the images like to make him appear itty bitty um don't look great to modernize but the giant props like they make up for it um and yeah the Previous one's more of, like, an action comedy. This one's more, like, profound and deep. Uh, yeah, some of the narration, it's, like, dang. Um, oh, and fun fact, the cat in Incredible Shrinking Man, um, is the same cat 
that appears in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Its name is Orangey. Um, and uh, for Breakfast at Tiffany's, it won an animal version of the Oscars. Um, so we have an award-winning cat. Um, oh, and it occurred to me while watching this that it's possible uh, that Scott Lang from Ant-Man might have gotten his name from this movie. Because uh, the main character's name is Scott Carey, so... Maybe. Um, also, this can be a slight rant. I view this movie as kind of how a relationship, as an allegory for how a relationship might suffer due to uh, an incurable illness in one of the parties. That's how I've always viewed it. For those of you who don't know me in real life, I was kind of a sickly child, so that that's always how I viewed it, was like husband and wife, their relationship suffer for uh, how he's deteriorating as he shrinks in size. Um, however, apparently that's not what the author intended. He intended it to be an allegory for, quote, man's shrinking importance in society. The man wrote this in 1953. Like, bro, bro, what the hell are you talking about? Um, but, but yeah, so th there was that one. Um, next I watched, <laughs> which segues into the next film, which uh, is The Incredible Shrinking Woman, in which they say, they straight up have the line where, oh, is this about the woman, the housewife's increasingly shrinking role in society? Which, this next movie kind of enraged me. Um, there will be many spoilers, but in, in my opinion, there's not much to spoil. It's terrible. Um, so yeah, as I said, the next movie we watched was The Incredible Shrinking Woman, uh, which was right here on YouTube. Um, if you are so inclined to watch it, again, I will leave a link in the description. Um, so spoilers. Um, I, I can't recommend it. I hadn't seen this movie as a child. I didn't much care for it then. I hate it now, honestly. Um, the original The Incredible Shrinking Man uh, was kind of a meditation on someone's worth as they shrink and as I interpreted it as medical difficulties in a relationship. This is just like the basis of parodies that didn't understand what the original was even about on either either uh sense um yeah uh i will admit the special effects are much improved from the original but it's like 25 years difference so they should be improved um now i'm just gonna rant about like the characters and again spoilers um so her kids are like the absolute worst. Um, they're just brats from beginning to end. At one point, they bring a bunch of neighborhood kids over to gawk at their mother, like they're charging them, which again, I'm still viewing as the medical condition and like how terrible would that be if your mother had a deteriorating disease and you brought neighborhood kids over and charge the money to take pictures of her without her permission like it's it's reprehensible um her husband is also the absolute worst wonder where the kids get it. um he's a an advertising guy so I think like mad men who literally only cares about his job he brings his boss over completely unannounced um 
which is already in normal circumstances like inconsiderate but uh, he's trying to him and his boss are trying to talk her into licensing a doll in her image and they get her drunk in order to manipulate her into agreeing to sign off on this like what the heck these people are so sociopaths um in another scene, uh, when his wife is still actively shrinking, um, he complains about their love life, which again, if you replace shrinking with a degenerative disease, like, what are your priorities? You don't know how much she's going to shrink till she's gone, but you're worried about your love life. He even gets her, like, a lingerie when she's, like, five inches tall, and it's like, buddy, what? Um, and through it all, they still expect her to, um, do the same household chores, despite being physically unable to do them. Also, they have a maid. Um, at one point, uh, she's pr trying to bring a salad and pasta to the dinner table, and... The rest of the family's just seated. They can see her struggling. She's a little shorter than the height of the counter. Okay, maybe this just gets me heated because I'm shorter. Um, so, seeing shorter people struggle and taller people not help kind of grinds my gears. Um, but yeah, they're just sitting there and she's struggling. No one offers to help and inevitably she just drops the pasta and salad and they just sit there like oh, again and she said she in the movie says looks like we gotta order out again so this has happened more than once where they have seen her struggle and just let her drop food and done nothing i hate i hate this movie um yeah they just sit there and act embarrassed um and yeah, like I said, they have a Latina maid who speaks no English. I feel like this was a trope in the 80s where there's a Latina maid and nobody speaks Spanish or like barest minimum. And I'm just... But... <sighs> but I'm also like... Uh... So, yeah, Latina Maid has minimal lines and a really loud scream at one point. Uh, but honestly, she might as well not be there. She's not helping her. Like, she doesn't help cook. Like, she cleans a little bit. But the, the shrinking woman, the mother, is still doing all the cleaning, or all the cooking and child rearing and stuff. And it's like, why are you employing this lady if she's not going to help this tiny five inch lady like there's one point where she's like three inches tall and she's still have cooking breakfast she's still flipping bacon why are you employing her and then they're complaining about that they need money and i'm like you could save money right there um and then of course the movie ends w with her miraculously returning to original size which uh, is kind of what, so spoilers for the last movie too, um, was what they wanted for Incredible Shrinking Man. They wanted him to get back to the original, to his original size, and the filmmakers refused, so he shrinks to, to what? We don't know, the subatomic. Um, but this movie, they're like, nope, she magically pops back up, and then maybe grows even larger. We don't know. The movie ends. I hate it. It's felt like such a, it's an awful cheap cop out. I hate this movie, but if you want to watch it, link is in the description. Um. So these. Huh. For for the next film. For the fourth, we I watched uh, Inner Space, which, I'm like previous movie. I love Inner Space. Um, it was directed by Joe Dante, who, if you don't know his name, you definitely have seen some of his movies. Uh, he made, like, Gremlins, 
the Explorers matinee, the Burbs, one of the segments in the Twilight Zone, the movie, um, all of which I recommend, by the way, if you haven't seen those. Um, the special effects in this were extremely well done, and apparently some film critics actually thought they had a miniaturized camera that was filming, like, giant blood cells. Um, which is kind of funny. Um, and this actually won uh, the Oscar for visual effects the year it came out. Uh, the leader of the effects team was Dennis Murin, who worked on Star Wars and Jurassic Park and a bunch of other films. Um, oh, and fun fact, uh, Martin Short's uh, doctor in this is the same doctor as in The Incredible Shrinking Man, so it's kind of funny he would have more than one patient. Um, although, Martin Short doesn't shrink, because he's already short. Um, it's, this is kind of more of a sequel to the Fantastic Voyage. Um, it's, like, they're working on the technology to shrink people and bring them up, back up. It's not, like, a medical thing. Um, but yeah, uh, Dennis Quaid is shrunk and then through random series of events gets put into a random, um, person who... Uh, Martin Short, who's actually a Safeway cashier, um, he gets like injected into him, and then he's gotta get Martin Short to help him, you know, get back to the lab and try to get put back to normal size and stuff. And a lot of fun, silly little misadventures. Uh, fun movie. I enjoyed it a lot. I had not seen this um, until my husband bought it for me. So, but. Highly recommend. Um, see, I don't rant about them as much if I don't absolutely hate them. Um, for our fifth entry, I did watch uh, Downsizing, uh, which I got free from the library, hence the squigglies there. Um, I kind of wonder if this movie wasn't inspired from uh, The Incredible Shrinking Woman, because at one point uh, in that movie, she gets kidnapped by some evil scientists um, who are wanting to shrink the world population to deal with climate change, which is kind of the main plot point of this movie. Um, I feel like this was kind of in between a comedy and a drama this movie's kind of mid, I'll be honest. Um, it has some super serious subject matter, like human trafficking, social stratification between very wealthy and poor, um, not having a social safety net, uh, climate change and climate doomerism, but doesn't dwell on any of it. It just zooms, zooms right past. You never have any time to really think about any of these ideas. Um, also, I feel like Matt Damon shouldn't have been the main character. Like, literally everyone else in this movie is more interesting than he is, and it's like, whoa. Why? <laughs> um, but yeah, the- there's a scientist in it who, uh, is like, Norwegian or Swedish, um, who comes up with the idea of shrinking people. Uh, to help with uh, climate change, so, you know, because if you're itty bitty, you're not going to use as much products. Um, and, like, they have, like, this self sustaining little uh, commune or whatever in Scandinavia. Um, and then everybody's like, that's a great idea. So they import it into America where they build, like, McMansions and stuff, and it's like very much twisting his original ideas and yeah there's like some deep themes but it just I feel like it kind of is still too much in between drama and comedy like it never chooses which one and if it had chosen it would have been better it's kind of I don't know a dramatic satire but it, I'm like choose choose if you want to be a drama then to delve into these issues or choose if you want to be a comedy and 
satire these issues, but no, just kind of fence sitting. Um, but I mean, to get from the library for free, it's fine for that price. Um, if you want a mid Matt Damon movie. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it for our marathon. I know I didn't watch, um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I was kind of wanting to talk about some of the lesser seen movies, and I'm sure most of my audience here has seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. If you haven't, go watch that. It has some amazing special effects too. Um, uh, but yeah, like I said, this was inspired by, uh, Ant-Man and, or, uh, Ant-Man 3 Quantumania coming out, which I actually just saw yesterday. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite Ant-Man movie, but I did enjoy it. Um, yeah. If you've seen any of these movies, feel free to comment. If you haven't, I, again, I highly recommend the original Incredible Shrinking Man. And if you're into torturing yourself, The Incredible Shrinking Woman. Alright. That's about it. We'll see you later. Happy viewing.